message is called Flowering Courts of God. So God has courts in heaven, you know, like we know a king has a court where he sits on the throne. And, and then you have people like on the sides, like, you know, the lords or whatever. So pretty much the message is called Flowering Courts of God. And of course, we are the flowers in those courts. <clears throat> so please turn to Psalm 92, verses 12 to 13. Psalm 92, verses 12 to 13. Psalm 92, verses 12 to 13. Amen. So we're all there. Psalm 92, verse 12 to 13. Okay, so Psalm 92, verse 12 to 13 says, The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our Lord. So, so just like that uh, that dream that the Lord showed me, and you know, I know that you, I I know how you're flourishing by that dream. It gave me perspective to know how you're doing spiritually. But pretty much this this scripture says that <clears throat> those that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. So basically, what is flourishing? Well, flourishing looks different for like a flower or a tree. And the Bible, you know, Jesus. Compared us as compared us as trees, and also flowers. Here we see, but so a flower when it flourishes, you know, like the 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 I don't know what the, what's the word in English, the the petal, the the, the petals, the, the, the petals are opening. That's how a flower is flourishing. The petals actually open up, and you know it's flourishing. When a tree is flourishing, the leaves are green. They're, they're coming out of whatever the color of the of the leaves, and if it's a flower tree, then flowers come out of it. That's the flourishing of that tree. Or if it's a fruit tree, fruits come out of it. And in the context of the new of the new covenant, Jesus is saying that like we are we are we are trees, and that we're called to bear good fruit. Well, if we're truly planted in the courts of God, and what I mean by that is that if we're truly walking in the Spirit, then we're going to actually bear the fruits of the Spirit. So it's not so much by looking at like, am I going to church every week? Okay, that's, you know, that's something good to do to, to get to a place where the atmosphere of God is there, where, 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 where you're being taught in the full counsel of God, yes. But it's deeper than that. Because to flourish in the course of our God, it means that you need to have the fruits of the Spirit. So this people can see that on you when when, it, when it's like ripe and everything people, people can see the fruits of the spirit on you but the fruits of the spirit is something that that you can use to measure your own growth as a matter of fact let's go quickly to, quickly to galatians 5. galatians 5 beginning at, at beginning at verse 4 so we're going to read what the fruits of the Spirit are. And God wants to emphasize in this season, like we need to really, the, the Bible says that the Word of God is a mirror. So when you look, when you read the Word of God, it tells you about your condition. And many times it tells you how to better your condition. So if uh, Galatians, sorry, I was in Ephesians. Galatians 5. Beginning at verse 22, sorry, Galatians 5, 22, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering. Okay, so understand, part of growing in God, part of flourishing in the courts of God, is actually enduring suffering. Not that, like, not that you seek suffering, of course not, but it is part of the character of God himself, because when God looks upon the earth, he sees how people are sinning, disobeying him. Some people even some people even hating him, serving the enemy. God suffers emotionally. He can't suffer physically. He's all powerful, but but emotionally, when he looks at the earth, he's suffering. And the Bible says that he's long suffering. Okay, waiting that people, um, you know, desiring that all would be saved. We know that not all will be saved, but but that's part of God's character. So God so God is long suffering, and so we should not. 
run at the idea of suffering as long as like it is for a good cause. So, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So basically, I, I highly recommend you to to read this passage of scripture a lot. Galatians five twenty two. Uh, 22 to 26 actually to just you know as you read that ask yourself am i growing in love am i growing in peace am i am i growing in those fruits of the spirit you know like do i run away from any suffering like, do i just like want no part of any hard time if any if that if that's the case then there's some um, improvement to be had and of course it's the holy spirit himself that'll make you improve but but here's the thing the Bible says that the love of God is the keeping of, of God's commandments. So to grow in love, you, it's not by, by forcing, or oh, I'm, I'm going to try to, no, you can't force love. Like to grow in love, you actually have to obey God's commandments. That's how, you'll, that's how you're actually allowing the Spirit of God to, 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 to make love grow in your heart. So it all begins by walking in the Spirit. That's why the Bible says that those who walk in the Spirit, those are the sons of God. And because we walk in the Spirit, if we truly do, then we should grow in the fruits of the Spirit. And like the dream about the, those flowers that God showed me, there's no end to the measure of, of love, of joy, of peace, of all those good things that you can grow into. There's no end to it. And as a matter of fact, Isaiah prophesies that when Christ returns, he says of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. So like you know in our mind we can't even imagine like unlimited peace like we we know like you know if if i'm in a quiet room with a book i like or, or you know <laughs> for somebody else it could be like you know with with a uh, ice cream or whatever whatever to just be in a quiet room doing something you like to us that's peace but god says peace is actually part of his character and in his presence and it will increase forever so <clears throat> that being said understand that, that those fruits Never say, okay, like I have that, 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 I'm good. No. If you have that, 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 then that means now raise the bar, go further. It doesn't mean to just like cap yourself. Just like in a dream, God made me remove the plastic cap of the flower pot so they can grow because the flowers were already there. But as soon as I removed the cap, they began to grow unend unendedly. So God wants us to remove the cap off of our lives of how far we both go with God and allow God in our lives. So God is saying, remove the cap, and you'll be amazed at how at how much further you can grow and become more Christ-like. And the more Christ-like you become, the more anointing will flow in your life to impact people, whether it's for evangelism, whether it's for, you know, uh, a prayer, like whatever it is, okay? So God's house, okay, because the, the verse we read in Psalm 92, 12 to 13, it says that, that those that will be planted in a in a in a house of the Lord shall shall flourish in the courts of our God. So God's house is bigger than a local church. Okay, God's house is bigger than local church. God's house is defined by the Holy Spirit. You know, the Bible says, "The kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit." So, in other words, God's house is bigger than a local church. God's house is fellowship and obedience to his spirit that's how you actually dwell in god's house so god's house could be as much outside in a park and and i'm explaining like if you approach somebody outside to talk about god well what's going on is that heaven came to that person so see like because we carry the holy spirit and the bible says that that the kingdom of god is contained in the holy spirit peace joy and 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 love that means that as a Christian, wherever you walk, you're actually carrying heaven. Like, like we're, all, we're all little arcs of the covenant. In other words, we're all uh, mobile thrones of God wherever we go. So God's house is not so much a church. Like, yeah, like a church building we need, but, but we are the living stones being built together into a house of God, the Bible says. We're God's workmanship. And each one of us are living stones being built together into a house of God, which means God's house, the, the vision we should have should be bigger than our church. It should be about walking in the spirit. And like uh, like Joseph said, you know, obeying the promptings of the spirit, because there's never anything that you do that God led you to do. 
that is unfruitful. Okay, even if you approach someone, if God says approach this person, say X, Y, Z, and you say it, and the person spits in your face, it's not unfruitful because that person, even even though they rejected it, that person at least you know had an occasion to to to, to receive God, yeah. so that when they so that when they face God on Judgment Day. They cannot say to God, you know, like I, I never knew. God will say, look, you spit in that person's face. So don't think by the reaction, if it's negative, that, that like you wasted your time. No. When, whenever you obey the word of God, you're not wasting anybody's time. As a matter of fact, you are, you are giving God time in your life. You, you're, you're actually allowing God to, 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 to move through you. So never think ever that, that oh, I talked to this person, they, they didn't receive it. Because even like... Uh, like Christine was talking about the person, like the the person that interrupted us when we were with Iman, talking about God in the Bible. When I when I went home, God actually told me. He told me that person, the things that like because okay, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. When he came to me, and he said, you know, I want to talk more on an intellectual level. Like I said to God right away, I said, Holy Spirit, speak, because I was not there to try to to to, to look smart to someone. I just want the Holy Spirit to speak to him. Because if the Holy Spirit speaks to him, then then even if he rejects it, he, he actually perceives light, he receives seed. And God told me that that um, later on that night, God told me that that person actually received revelation, but but was too proud because it was a big crowd of Muslims and he was a Muslim. So he told me that that because because of the surroundings, he, w- he would have never said, I see what you like, I understand what you're saying, or like, I see it, I'm getting revelation. Like he just got angry because because of the crowd, his pride, you know, his pride was hurt. He felt that 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 you know he was obviously like you know losing the argument, but because he was because I said Holy Spirit speak, okay. But here's the point. The point is that God told me that that person actually received seed and revelation, and is actually closer to the true God. So even if someone approaches you in a negative way, you should always say Holy Spirit speak. I'm telling you, like, even when I counsel people over the phone or in person, even if I think I know, I always say, Holy Spirit, speak. And we should always have that attitude because the Bible says that, that the flesh profiteth nothing, okay? But, <clears throat> but whatever we do in the spirit yields a harvest. And whatever we do in the spirit, so, so for example, like, if you, if you choose to do something in the flesh just because you, th- you think you understand something, that's in the flesh, and literally, when you enter heaven, you will you will, you'll have no reward for anything done in the flesh. So you'll only have rewards for things done by the Holy Spirit's prompting and direction. So, to be planted to, to be planted in a in a house of God is bigger than local church because the kingdom of heaven is in us. Okay, Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is in us. So we need to really obey the Holy Spirit more than ever before if we want to have unity in the body of Christ. See, if every child of God diligently obeyed the voice of God, God told me that the, if, uh, if every child of God diligently obeyed the voice of God, He told me that, that we would have in a church on earth the same unity and atmosphere of heaven. Like the church would have, like there'd be no division whatsoever if we all walked in the Spirit. The reason why there's so much division so many denominations and just so so much arguments and fighting is because there's too much flesh going on. There's too much flesh, and really all we can do about that is to pray. But for but for yourself, you can go before God, get on your knees, and and ask God to truly change you and really open your heart to God because the heart like the the the, the fervent prayer of the righteous develops much. The Bible says yes, amen. so. What I'm, what I'm saying is not so you get discouraged and say, oh, you know, like, I wish we had more unity. No. What I'm saying is that so you get on your knees and actually pray to God, Father, help us to have a move of your spirit where your children learn to walk in the spirit, no matter what their church is called, no matter what, like, no matter where they come from. Teach the church to walk in the spirit, because if you walk in the spirit, we're actually going to bring heaven to earth and we're actually going to see the, the uh, an end time revival move of God, which will happen, by the way. God is saying, by the way, it's going to happen. And for you to be part of it is to decide to walk in the Spirit, okay, and to and to and to not boast 
in, in, in your church or into whatever, but to boast only in God. The Bible says that if you want, if you want to boast, boast in God. And that doesn't mean, okay, like I did a miracle. No, no, no. That means you say, okay, for the glory of God, okay, for the glory of God, we will work together and stuff like that. But understand, we need to walk in the Spirit. And I'm prophesying right now, God's telling me to tell you that there's a move of the, of the Spirit brewing right now. Okay, and he's saying that we need to walk in the spirit and it'll actually bring more souls to walk in the spirit. And your fervent prayers, God says that your fervent prayers is actually motivating people and putting them on fire all over the world. Just because you don't see it, don't think it's not happening. Okay, um, I already know for a fact there's a move of God in, in, in his ministry right now happening. God showed me, but understand that Okay, doors have, doors have already begun to open, okay? But understand that God says you, you, need to pure, you, you need to get purified. The way we purify ourselves, okay, the Bible says, Jesus prayed in the Bible, he said, Father, sanctify them by thy truth, thy word, that thy word is truth. Which means, if you want to be sanctified, you need to read the Bible often, okay? If you want to be, if you want to be more holy than in the past, then read more of the Bible daily than in the past. Because Jesus said, sanctify them by thy truth, thy word is truth. If you want to be more pure, you, you need to raise the bar on your Bible reading because it, it, it sanctifies you, okay? It sanctifies you, and the word of God is, is filling you with grace and cleansing you, and also increase your prayer time. Please turn to Psalm 135, verses 1 to 3. Psalm 135, verses 1 to 3. Psalm 135, verses 1 to 3. When you're there, say amen. Psalm 135, verses 1 to 3. So it says, Praise ye the Lord, praise ye the name of the Lord, praise him, O ye servants of the Lord, <clears throat> sorry, ye that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praise unto his name, for it is pleasant. I want us to read again verse 1 and 2, and then we're going to see something very key here. So it says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise him, O ye servants of the Lord. Ye that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. So this is what this means. Only those who serve God will actually stand in his courts. Okay? See, heaven has a, a, an epicenter, which is the throne of God. And, and at the throne of God, who's there? We have the 24 elders. We have the four living creatures. We have Jesus, okay? And, and, and we have the archangels. So what, what is the common denominator between the four living creatures, Jesus, the 24 elders, and the archangels? They're constantly working for God, constantly serving God. Then you have, then you have like what I call the outer court of heaven, okay? Where you have, you know, people, 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 people dwellings. Like, so heaven, okay, heaven is actually designed, just like Moses, the, the, the tabernacle was done according to the pattern of heaven. Well, I'll tell you why. See, the Holy of Holies, it's not, it's not that when you, when you go to heaven, and, and yes, there's temples in heaven, but it's, it's bigger than that. So the Holy of Holies represents the throne of God in heaven. The holy place represents the New Jerusalem, where, where the throne of God is, which is where, uh, you know, if you, if you read the Bible, you realize that, that, all, that it has 12 gates with the, with the name of the 12 tribes. So the holy place, so sorry, the holy of holies is the throne of God. The holy place is the New Jerusalem, okay, where, where um, the seed of Jacob lives in heaven. And then the outer court, you know, the Bible says the outer court is, is, is for the Gentiles. 
So the outer court is for every other nation, tribe, and tongue in heaven. So that's the design of heaven, okay? So understand that if you want to stand in the courts of God, you need to be like Abraham, like Isaac, like Jacob. You need to serve God, okay? It's one thing, it's, 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 it's one thing to, to be saved. It's another thing to be a servant of God. And so, see, if you're saved, you'll, you, know, you, can enter, you, you can enter heaven, but you'll be in the outer court. Too. And, and, and that doesn't mean, you, it doesn't mean you won't enjoy heaven, but that means like your, your, your dwelling is in the outer court. Okay? So, but if you, if you want to be amongst the patriarchs, if you want to be, um, you know, if you want to be amongst 24 elders, if you want to stand in, a, in that holy of holy with the archangels, and, and, and hear the, the deep counsels of God, you need to become a servant now. Okay, because Jesus said, Jesus said that um, those who obey his commandments and teach people to obey his commandments will be called great in heaven. Those who do not obey and teach people not to obey will be called least. So in other words, to be in the courts of God, to be planted there, you need to be someone who obeys the commandments, of course, not under the law, but by the spirit of the law, which is the Holy Spirit. So we walk in the spirit of the law. We don't walk under the law. We walk in the spirit of the law. Okay. So that Holy Spirit has the like like that. It will give you grace. And how how do how do how do we how do we um, obey God? Well, we obey. It begins it begins by by fellowship. Okay. I'll I'll prove it to you right now. When you first meet somebody, okay, you know, like we all have different tastes, different likes, and everything. But the closer you become to someone, you know, by fellowship just means like, you know, like you're, you spend time together. The closer you become to someone, the more, you know, it's funny how, how like, you know, like, like we, we take on the expressions and the habits of our friends, you know, like we just, we just adopt it. So the closer you become to God, it's the same thing. You begin to do the, the things God do. You, be, you begin to speak like Him. You, you begin to, to, you know, to, to walk like God. And, and, and by that, I'm, I mean in holiness and purity. So the way that we actually become servants of God, it, it, all, begin, it all begins at, um, you know, it all begins at, at, at a desire. If you have a, Jesus said, blessed are those who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness because they will be filled. If you're not hungry to be holy, you'll just not be holy. It, it, it begins with the hunger. So if if you wanna if you want to stand in God's court, and I highly I'm telling you that's where you want to be because the Bible says that those who those who are planted in like in His courts will flourish. Which means when like when you look at a at a, at a flower and it's flourishing, it's beautiful, it's attractive. Okay, it's a blessing to be around. When I see a flower, I feel I feel blessed and soothed just being around the flower. So. That's how the anointing works. When you're when you're flourishing by God, when, when you're flourishing in God's courts, that's how you, the anointing works. The, the, the anointing makes you like a flower. People just like gravitate to you, okay? And why? Because you're a servant of God. So when they come to you, you know, it's not to, to, to get drunk. It, it's when they come to you, they, they, they are attracted by the anointing in your life, and then by by fellowshipping with you, they, they they encounter God just by talking to you, okay? Because the Holy Spirit of God is in you. So. Let's read Psalm 1 and 2 of verse 135 again. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise him, O ye servants of the Lord. Ye that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. So, people are entering heaven as we speak with no reward because you never served them. You know, and... That being said, I'm not encouraging you to say just you can enter heaven and do nothing. That's, that's dangerous. It's dangerous to do nothing for God. It's dangerous. Okay? Yeah. But people are, are entering heaven with no rewards because they never served them. And others are entering heaven, okay, by, with Christ saying, you know, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into, the, enter into the peace of your Lord. And then they have many rewards. They have beautiful, they have, they have, but they stand in the a, in a courts of God, which means... And I'm telling you, like, I've, I've been in heaven in the spirit many times, and I've heard testimonies on YouTube, and there's one thing that is common, w what they say with what I've seen, is that heaven is wonderful, it's like, it's beautiful, it looks a lot like earth, but a lot, a lot more, so much better, but 
here's the thing. When you go to the throne in heaven and you see God, everything else pales in comparison. You actually, you actually want to stay there forever. You actually don't even want to go anywhere else. God is so captivating, so fulfilling, that you actually, if you could, you actually choose to, not, to, to never go anywhere. You just stay there, okay? But to be planted in the courts, that doesn't mean you just stay there. That's not what it means. It means that, that forever, your job with God in heaven, you know, is you're, you're part of the courts of heaven. Okay, that's what it means. So, because when you go to heaven, you live a real life, and you, and you actually enter your full destiny. So, that's why he said, that, that's why Christ said, okay, there, there's the least in heaven, and there's the great. It all depends on how you live your life for God on earth. Okay, but understand when you go to heaven, you want to be at the courts. You, 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 you want, whatever you do in heaven for God, you want to be one of, the, one of the court members of heaven, because that's where the most powerful presence of God is. That's where... You know, people just desire to be there, okay? So a king's court is the epicenter of his kingdom where lords and ministers will. So when you go to the king's court, you, first of all, it says, it says how, how to enter worship. If you don't become a worshiper, you'll never become planted in his courts. Because see, when you go to the courts of God in heaven, you know, angels are worshiping the, like, the whole time. So... Even when you talk to God and He talks to you, there's worship going on. If you don't get into the, if you don't embrace worship, you will never be planted there. Okay, the reason why archangels and even creatures are so powerful is because they spend almost all their time there worshiping God. That's why the that's why they're the most powerful angels. Lucifer used to be the most powerful angel. Why? Because he was worshiping there all the time and leading everything. So you you know you're the amount of time we spend worshiping God will determine the amount of power moving through you and will determine also how much God will trust you. Because, see, when, when you spend your time that you could do something else worshiping God, it only blesses God, but it shows God that you actually, you know, love Him. And also, when you worship God, you're actually entering, your spirit is actually in heaven in the courts, worshiping God. And it's like this, when you're always there worshiping Him, God says, you know what? I can use this person. And understand, okay, I'm not talking about to wait to go to heaven. I'm talking about start serving God now, and your spirit will be planted there now. See what I mean? Because there's no distance with God, and His spirit is in us, which means that if we serve Him now, okay, we're, we're not only storing rewards, but even more than that, we're blessing God. And even better than that, we're actually ensuring our place in God's court. So understand that if you want to have those kind of blessings and, and, and anointing and, and, and power flowing in your life, okay, well, you need to be a worshiper and you need to, to seek God to serve Him, which means that you need to serve God in any capacity until you actually get to your destiny. And by the way, no one will ever enter destiny serving without, you know, the, 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 the basics, like, like their steps. And God will always start you small. He sees if you're faithful there. And if you are, then he'll, you know, get you a bit higher. And, if, and eventually he'll say, okay, this is how you enter your destiny. And, you, and everything will just fall into perfect alignment at the right time if you're faithful with the small things. So Jesus, the King of Kings wants all of us to flourish in his courts by serving him in our destined kingdom duties okay and before i became a pastor with my own church if you ask joseph here he was a witness i was doing dishes at another church <laughs> i was doing dishes at conferences i was doing dishes i was serving the the guest speakers at, like i i was actually a, i was actually a supervisor of the 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 hosting team and the leader was Gemma Follini. But anyways, like whenever she was not there, I had to be in charge of everything, make sure the food was, was there on time, the caterers came, the food was in, in, the, in, the, in the, the guest room on time. And then after they ate everything, okay, then we did dishes. And if nobody was there, then I had to start it by myself. And he was there, I did that for at least two, two, and, a, two and a half or three years. And then out of nowhere one day, God said, out of nowhere one day, uh, Joe McBride came to me and then he said, Louis, you should lead something. 
you know, and um, I was already a young adult leader, but, but he said you should lead like a, a group something. And then I told him that, uh, you know, uh, Stefan and I and uh, David, that we were meeting, you know, just sharing our, just sharing our revelations and that I would like to do a Bible study uh, in one of the rooms at church. And he said, yep, yeah, do it. And then so it like, see, everything fell at the perfect timing because of faithfulness. And then within even within not even two months of doing that, that Bible study, then Christine comes there. And then I see like everything falls in place perfectly on God's timing without you lifting a muscle. It like it was somebody who approached me saying, lead a group. And then, you know, he, he, he gave me the room, like a, a room in a, in, a, in, in a church, which which was like, you know, where the, the, the main leaders met. So I had that room and everything just came by itself. Why? Because. See, many in the church are trying to make things happen in their lives, okay? But they're going about it the totally wrong way. You need to, you, serve. you need to serve. I'm telling you, like, and 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 even I've I've heard uh, it was Jordan Bright too. He said to me, not to me, to the whole to the whole congregation one time. He said, "Those who serve get married." And I'm telling you, I've observed it. I've lived it myself. Do, like those who serve get married. That being said. Of course, people who don't serve get married as well. But if it's really of God, there, there's a pattern. Look at look at Adam. Adam was tilling the, the the Garden of Eden. He was working, and then there was there was not even any. Okay, somebody told me before. I don't believe, and a Christian told me that. A Christian told me, and <laughs> it's terrible. And that Christian was actually our, our our marriage counselor, which was terrible. But anyways. Um, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't follow that counsel. Don't worry. But this is what he said to us. He said, "I don't believe there's a soul made from God, because there's so many people around." And and I'll just give you a bit more why we didn't listen to him. Because he's like I told him one time that um, you know that a man should love his wife like Christ of the church, and he told me it's impossible. So that's why we didn't listen to that counsel because he was counseling us away from the word. So, anyways, I just want to make that clear. It was not rebellion. It was. It was just shock, okay, shock of like just like you know, nonsense. But anyways, so his argument was that, you know, he doesn't believe in soulmates because there's so many, see, there's so many people around and all all this stuff. Well, look at look at Adam. No woman existed, and God with without Adam lifting a finger, God put him to sleep so he couldn't say he had any part of it, and then God you know took a rib and made a woman, so. How much more of a soulmate is, is of, of an example for a soulmate is that? So, which means, in other words, not just for marriage, for anything, if you do it with a proper, the proper biblical channel, you will you will not have to lift a finger for your destiny to happen. And 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 if and if you're a man, okay, if you just serve God. Okay, you will not have to lift a finger. God will make everything happen for your help because women were created, the, the woman was created to help the men. So, and for women, if you develop the character of a helper, okay, not a bully, <laughs> but a helper, then of, again, like, and you serve God, you, you won't have to lift a finger. So here it's, not, it's for destiny, it's for everything with God. If you simply serve God, you will flourish and when a flower flourishes, it is picked up to ornate many things, okay? So when you flourish, if you're planted in God's courts, and again, it's beyond the church, it's walking in the spirit and obedience, you'll flourish to the point that God will take you and, 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 and just, you know, put you somewhere and, you know, whatever the blessing that, that you're looking for will come in God's timing. So if you're serving God, don't second guess yourself if you messed up or not, because it is God's timing. If you're a servant of God, it's all it's all God's timing. So let's turn to Isaiah fifty four seventeen. Isaiah fifty four seventeen. Yet, yeah. so as you have fifty four seventeen, we're all there. So Isaiah fifty four seventeen says, 
No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So see, when you become a servant of God, like any like any good job in the world, okay, in other words, when you become employed by God, so it sinks in. Not just going to church and reading the Bible, that's not, you know, you have to be employed by God, okay, which means you follow the Holy Spirit's lead. That's how you do it, okay? So when you're employed by God, you have benefits, and one of those benefits is that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. So what does this mean, okay? So if someone takes a sword and tries to hit you, and then you block with a shield, well, the weapon is trying to prosper, but it's not. So don't don't get confused. This doesn't mean that you, that the weapon won't you know like hit you. It means that the intent of the weapon will not prosper. Which means, if someone takes a sword against you in a battle, if you if you're in medieval times, and was trying to stab you or hit you, and you're blocking with a shield, okay? Well, that weapon is not prospering. But it doesn't mean that it's not being used against you, okay? So this doesn't say that no weapon will be used. It says no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. That means, okay, when things are going bad, yeah, okay, don't say why, like, no. Things are going bad, like, you know, tribulations come because you're, if you get employed by God, by default, okay, if you join, if you join... Like, I don't even like using this, this example because I believe this, the, the whole world scene media is staged. But for lack, of, for lack of a better example, if you join the U.S. Army, by because you're a soldier, you're automatically at war with, with uh, you know, whatever country you're at war with. So it's the same thing with God. If you, if you, if you get employed by God, you're automatically at war with Satan. That's why the weapons come against you. And that's why he had to tell you this. That's why he had to tell us this promise. Because see, he says, No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment that shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Which means, the weapon will surely come against you. Actually, as a matter of fact, let's read, let's read verse 14. So it says, <clears throat> actually 15, Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Which means, the enemy will surely gather together, and it's not God doing it. So when you get attacked, don't say God, God, God is doing it. It's not him. He says, Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. So see, God said, they will surely gather together against you. Okay? But, because you're my servant, they're going to fall. Okay? So this is the thing. If we serve God, it means that we got to be prepared for attacks. Which means, if you, if you begin to serve God, and then you're, you're astonished at the attacks, that means that you don't even know what, you don't really understand what's going on. If you serve God, you're at war with the enemy. Attacks will come. And, and the, the Bible says that, that when people persecute you, you know, when those tribulations come, rejoice, because great is your reward in heaven. Why? Imagine you own the company, and then somebody was like designing something for you in the company. And then, you know, people from the outside of the, of the company were trying to like, you know, hire him away from you. But he, stick, but he stuck around, even though he got called names and everything, and just finished the product, and then it blessed you so much. Wouldn't you promote that person? Of course you would. So that's why the Bible says that when tribulation comes, rejoice. Because God wants you to, wants you to understand. If you're persecuted, if you're attacked, and you keep serving God, you need to rejoice because in heaven, you're, you're being promoted. You know, uh, treasures are being stored for you. And not just in heaven, but even on earth, okay, more anointing is being poured, poured on you. Because remember, Christians tend to think, to think of heaven and earth as so separated. Okay? 
But in the Holy Spirit, everything is connected. Like So there's nowhere that God is not. So when you go through tribulations, the Bible, the Bible says don't wait to go to heaven to celebrate your, your, your rewards. Celebrate now. Why? Because heaven is in you. The kingdom of God Amen. is in you. Amen. So don't wait until everything is perfect. Celebrate. Celebrate now. And that celebration will, 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 as a matter of fact, push the enemy because worship brings the presence of God down and pushes the enemy. So you celebrating and worshiping God even when you're being attacked, that very act of worship brings even more deliverance from God and makes the, the attack last less longer because you're actually bringing God in the in, in, in equation. So don't think it's just like a ritualistic thing to like celebrate when I'm on the trial. No, if you actually do it, you will make the trial last, like, you know, diminish, you know, and, 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 and last not as long. So, as a servant of God, no weapon of Satan can prosper against us. Because Satan cannot destroy anything planted in the courts of God. Can you imagine? Like, Satan wanted to, to, to push God off the throne and take the throne. But, okay, he fell miserably fell to the earth like, like lightning and if we are servants of god that means we become planted in his courts okay so if if you're planted in god's courts no weapon can prosper against you why because that's that's like a a pillar in god's house okay and and, and that's that's another blessings the bible like uh, christ himself says for those who overcome there'll be pillar in in in, in a temple of god so imagine satan cannot go to heaven and start wrecking architecture, destroying pillars. He can't. So if you're, if, you're, if you're a servant of God and you're planted in heaven, it says, then here on earth, he can try to push you, but he cannot, he, cannot, he cannot win. He cannot be victorious. So being a servant of God is not just good to, 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 you know, to be planted in those courts, but being a servant of God makes it so that nothing can defeat you. Satan cannot defeat you because you're planted and held by God himself. Yeah. So attacks yeah. will come, yeah. but if you remain planted, if you keep serving, okay, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. you will overcome. Yes, God will always heal and, and that weapon will not prosper. Yes, and in the end, God will be glorified because by his grace, it's, just, it's the grace of God that, that made you stand firm and, 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 and pursue and you'll be rewarded, and God will be glorified. So let's turn to Luke 16, verse 10. Luke 16, verse 10. We're all there. Luke 16, verse 10. So Luke 16, 10 says, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in, the, in much. So see, God already knows, and we should know by his word, you know, there is okay. I'll say it like this: like there is prom there there is a room for promotion in every kingdom, especially in God's kingdom, because you know there's no end to the increase of His kingdom. If there's no end to the increase of God's kingdom, that means there's no end to the promotions we can receive, both now and the and then the world to come. Okay, because His kingdom is forever increasing, forever expanding, and and that means that there's forever room to, 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 to get promoted. That being said, God is looking for diligence. He, he wants to see if we have the character to endure because think about it. If we're gonna if we're gonna enter heaven, understand, yeah, heaven is wonderful, but we're it's still God's kingdom. That means there's still work to be done. And you know, we can't speculate until we get there and find out find out what it is. But what we know is that we've been created unto good works, the Bible said, okay, before the foundation of the, of the world. So we've been created unto good work, and guess what? Even before the even before that the, the earth was made, the angels in heaven were created unto good work as well. Every creature of God is created unto good work, okay? So 
wor work is not a curse, okay? You know, yeah, the, the sweat of our brow is a curse, okay? But work itself is not a curse, okay? So, that being said, we need to understand that God, if God created us unto good works, we need to change our mindset, okay? Even, even at our secular workplace, we need, we need to think like, okay, if I was created unto good work, that means, like the Bible says, whether your boss is good or forward, serve him and honor that boss at, in a workplace. So that develops character, okay? And also it develops character for, 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 for working God's kingdom. But understand, I emphasize here, we were created unto good works. That means we need to get the, that, that mindset out of our minds that like retirement is the best thing ever. Yes, if you're, if you're aged, I understand you need to rest physically, but spiritually, you're not, you, you never retire spiritually, okay? So don't say, when I'm retired, I'm going to start evangelizing. You, 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 can't, you can't play with God like that, okay? No. You have to do it now, yeah. okay? Because we've been created unto good work, and God is looking who's faithful that, that I can promote. I understand, with promotion always comes benefits. The Bible says in, in Psalm 103, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. And it goes on even to say that he, he who renews your youth like the eagle, God can even renew, renew your youth, okay? And I've actually, I have a testimony, like, I've actually felt my, my joint in my knees every couple of months. I just feel them getting, like, stronger and stronger. And, and, then, and then I actually remembered right now, God told me, like, well, you're, you're claiming Psalm 103, like, so I'm answering you. Understand, okay, Moses was 80 years old when he began his ministry, and he was able to climb up and down Mount Sinai with gigantic stone, stone blocks. I mean, like, that was supernatural, okay? So understand, with God, nothing shall ever be impossible. And if you, the Bible says God can renew your youth. If you don't believe it, you won't have it. But if you believe it and pray it and claim it, you're going to have it. So understand that we need to believe the word of God and we need to be faithful with a few so God can reward us with a much. So, you know, I, when I was in that other ministry, I was faithfully doing dishes every conference, you know, setting and taking the place away, you know, I, you know, guiding the people under me. I was faithfully doing that. Nobody was like, you know, nobody was noticing. People just wanted to like, they, they, they were there for the speaker, not for me doing dishes. Okay. So it, like, it was it, like, it was a thankless job. And, 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 I, and I told some of the people that, that were, that were, you know, with me in that team, I told them, <laughs> I remember like, 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 you know, we, we, what a joke one time. I told them like, is it just me or, you know, pushing that, 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 that coffee dolly, you know, <laughs> in a sanctuary during a conference is so like, it, it, it's, it's humbling, you know? And they were like, <laughs> and they were like, they were like, I know what you mean. You know? And you, you remember it, eh? like, you know, it's like the room is like jam packed with people. There's a speaker from the States. And then the door is open and you're just pushing this little dolly there on the side, you know. <laughs> it was so humbling, I'm telling you. Sometimes I was like, oh man, like, anyway, anyways, no, no. Sometimes I was like, <laughs> I was like, Kelly, you, you bring the dolly in there. <laughs> anyways, I repent. But it, it was very humbling. It was very humbling. And, and it's the thing, like, you know, I kept doing it and, it. and after a while, I was enjoying it. And then God promoted me. So I'm telling you, we all have things we want to do for God. We all have dreams that God even Himself put there. Okay, if your dreams don't 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 validate any any will of God, then then you know God put put it there. But God says like you need to be diligent in the small things, and then I can trust you in the bigger things. Amen. Okay. Amen. And that being said, the church uh, the church is here to mainly get people saved and to educate them in a full counsel of God, of God's word in obedience. So if you don't know what to do, like just ask God how, how you can, you know, like we're all different, we do things differently, but just ask God, how can I work for you? Like, you know, and just whatever it shows you do it and keep doing it and doors will open. I'm telling you, doors will open, your, your spouse will come, like things will just keep opening and opening. Like, as long as you understand, if there's anything I want you to understand tonight is that if you serve God, you'll have the benefits of God's servants, okay? And 
one of those benefits, look at Adam, is you need help. If you serve, you need help. <laughs> so, amen, that's the message.